Greetings and welcome back to room 303, the Harvard Classics Lectures. We are now in Harvard Classic Lecture number 94 from the Harvard Classics Volume 26, the Continental Drama, as the titles uh, the, the text is referred to. We're now going to look at Lessing's Mina von Barnhelm, or it's sometimes recalled uh, The Soldier's Happiness or The Soldier's Fortune from 1763. The play was actually completed by Lessing in 1767. But he wanted to emphasize the recent Seven Years' War, and so he uh, and so he placed the date as 1763. So, in our study of continental drama, we've already spent some time with the great Spanish writer um, Calderon. All right, life is a dream. Then we turn to the three greatest of the French 17th century French uh, thinkers. Um, and we looked at Cornell's Polycup, as well as Racine's Phaedra, and uh, then finally Moliere's Tartuffe. All of these are uh, posted there at learnstrong.net. Now, in the last two plays of this volume, we're going to turn to two great German writers. We're going to look at Lessing in this one, and then Schiller in the, uh, in the, um, in the lecture to follow. Let's do a real quick biography of Lessing. Born the 22nd of January, 1729, dies 15th of February, 1781 one of the great German philosophers and writers, an outstanding representative of the Enlightenment era of, uh, of German literature, had a tremendous effect on German literature, considered the first dramaturge, which is a critiquer of drama, especially in his theater at Hamburg. Goethe considered this the, great, the greatest of all the French, uh, all the German writers, and some argue the greatest writer of all time. You can look at our comments on Faust for that one. Goethe considered this play one of the great ones, certainly one of the greatest examples of German comedy. Now, of course, we know that comedy is going to end happily, usually with marriage, and so we're going to see this one as well. So we begin now with a brief summary of the play. We begin now with Major von Tellen. Now, he's been dishonorably discharged and therefore wounded from the Prussian army, and he's threatened by financial troubles, serious bribery allegations. So he's waiting at a Berlin hotel with his servant, Just, which is a great name for the servant, for the outcome of a trial that's taking place. So this is kind of the backdrop here. In other words, at one point in his life, he was this amazing war hero. Now um, he's under suspicions that are in fact false, completely false, right? So he's penniless, he has nothing, and this condition is because repayment of a large sum advanced to the government during the recent war is being held up, and therefore his honor in making the loan is being questioned. In other words, he's dealing with a situation beyond his control, and it's having negative influences and effects upon him, and the way people think of him. He is away from the hotel inn, and the landlord, who is a great character developed by Lessing, he basically has all of uh, Tellum's stuff um, removed from his room, because the rooms are needed for a lady and her maid. This lady will, of course, be Mina, um, the, the central figure of, of the play, the female figure of the play. Now, of course, in reality, the landlord he kind of doubts that Tellum has got any money to be able to pay him since he already has a, you know, some serious problems in terms of debt. In the removal, however, of the major's possessions, the landlord comes across the sealed envelope marked as containing 500 thalers or, or um, currency. The discovery obviously makes him a little bit concerned about trying to make sure that Tellum is taken care of. What he doesn't know is that the money's been left with the Major by Paul Werner, his former sergeant and dear friend. Werner, knowing Tellum's predicament, is in hope that he can use the money as his own. Tellum, however, and this is key to this play, too honorable to borrow money when he has no way of being sure that he can repay it. Instead, he bids his servant to take his last possessions of value, an expensive ring, one of the central symbols of this play, and pawn it so that way he can pay the landlord's bill and his own back wages as well. 
just, the servant, pledges the ring with the landlord, but refuses to accept either wages or dismissal on the plea that he's in Tellum's debt, and they'll have to work it out. So you have honor and loyalty as a central two-way message of this play. The landlord, loving to talk all the time, shows the ring to some newly arrived guests, revealing considerable information even about the owner's circumstances, which obviously he shouldn't do. Well, of course, the guests, Lady Mina von Barnhelm, recognizes immediately the ring. The ring is the, as one of the betrothal rings uh, which she and Telham had exchanged. And she's overjoyed that her search for her missing lover has finally come to an end. Okay? So now we've got a typical comedy in so many ways. We've got um, Telham and Mina now. And when Telham appears, um, he refuses to accept Mina's hand or to continue the engagement on account of his bad situations. In other words, out of loyalty, out of honor, he says, I don't think I'm the guy that you need to have in your life. No, move, no argument can move him. So Mina, with the help of her maid, Francesca, which is one of the most really, truly amazing characters, Lessing has drawn some really wonderful characters in this play, she pretends that she too is penniless, has no future at all. She's in a bad way, she pretends this. It's what she calls her trick. Immediately, tell him, because he is a man of honor, claims the privilege of marrying her and protecting her. Right? At this point, we get a delayed letter from the king, brought in, it announces the restoration of Tellum's fortune, the vindication of his honor, as is typical in comedies, right? To punish him, however, for making her suffer, Mina now will pretend that she can't marry Tellum because of the inequality of their circumstances. Now you're very rich, I'm very poor. In other words, she turns the trick, the idea, back on itself. In answer to his pleas, she uses his own recent arguments to confound him, right? It's only when Tellum is reduced to the verge of despair. In fact, she worries that maybe she's taken her trick a little bit too far, she says. And uh, the, the arrival of Mina's uncle and the guard, and, and guardian threatens to give the whole thing away. Finally, because of all of that, Mina relents. She reveals the truth. And in a final scene, we have celebration. Everything's settled to the satisfaction. And Francesca and Paul Werner, in fact, have been kind of developing a, a, a relationship throughout the play. And uh, they may end up becoming lovers themselves at some point. And that's how the play ends. Now, let's go through our big five really quickly. Epistemologically, what does this text say? Well, no question. Very much like what we've said in previous studies, like Moliere's Tartuffe. The fallibilist position epistemologically, in other words, what it is that we can know. The absolutist position is, I absolutely know what's true, and no one can change my mind. The danger of that is made clear in a play like this. Obviously, the relativist position, you can't believe anything or anybody, doesn't work. And so the fallibilist position, I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. It's that I could be wrong part that this play seems to emphasize. Ontologically, that is to say, what is it that this play says about who we are? Well, it's clear this play says that humans are species that long for love and for acceptance and for approval, right? What does this text say about psychology? Well, the power of fear, no question, leads to a lack of faith often. Sociologically, obviously the play is suggesting we have to take care of each other in a society. We have to protect each other. We have to have faith, put faith in each other as well, right? Of course, the themes of honor and loyalty are central to this play. What does this text say about theodicy and the existence of pain or suffering in the world? I think Lessing is making a really interesting point. He suggests that often, Things happen that are way beyond our control and cause us pain, no doubt. But we often create our own suffering through many of the choices that we make or don't make. At 3A, messages, themes, well, obviously, one of the major ones here is that life's not always what it appears. And sometimes good people do get jacked, and they have to find ways to behave in an honorable fashion. At 2B, obviously, the irony of the play is that Mina does to her guy what he, of course, had done to her, and so there's that trick, that kind of thing going on. At 3A, obviously, this will remind us of any number of Shakespearean comedies, and as well, Moliere's Tartuffe, which we just spoken about. 
Finding a 3B, a, t a way to relate this to ourselves personally. What was a time when you were fooled, right? Or what was a time that you fooled someone else, but it was for a good cause? Well, I hope that an introduction like this will lead you to want to enjoy watching and reading Lessing's play, a play that doesn't get the kind of view time now that it once did, and yet I think it's worthy of your time. The great Lessing, the German writer-philosopher. Thank you.